Welcome to another telecast on LMC Varsity Sports. I'm Elijah Ware alongside Jeremy Braferi, and we're at Rynek High School as their varsity girls basketball team gets set to host KO. And KO comes in at 3-9, and nine, Rynek at 6-7, and seven, and the Panthers have a huge size advantage this game. Oh, absolutely. I mean, KO's only coming into this game 3-9. and nine. This is definitely a winnable game for Rynek. You know, they're on the verge of playoffs. They can win this game, get to 500, start some momentum. Hopefully that can take them into the postseason. So the Panthers try to get back in the win column when we come back on LMC Bar City Sports. Set for the opening tip off. It'll be Kiera Hutt against Mayu Nakamura. And these two teams coming in here under 500, trying to get back in the win column. And we are almost underway. And it is Ryanek winning the opening tip. It's now Caparelli out, out top. She swings it over to Pechia. And she airballs the first shot of the game. Still getting warmed up, Jeremy. Oh, yeah. That was a good pass to set it up, though. It showed that they're trying to be aggressive early on. It's going to be key for Marinette to move the ball. I mean, not Rynek to move the ball around on offense, playing against the zone. And KO is going to have to do the same thing as Rynek is also in the zone. The first shot is missed, and the... Rebound comes down to Morgan Parker. That was a good, good sign of things to come, though. They were moving the ball. And Caparelli goes in and gets fouled. With 7.27 left to go, she'll be at the line shooting two. That's a veteran move by Caparelli right there to get aggressive early. Oh, yeah. Try and draw foul. Driving to the paint. See the lane open up. You got to take it. Yep. It's amazing seeing a veteran move because they have so many sophomores on their team as well, you know? Mm -hmm. Seeing a young team play like veterans. It's a good, good sign of things to come. Seeing these young players grow throughout this season. Coach Lincoln has done a great job thus far. And this, it'll be KO's ball. Caparelli goes one for two. KO moving it around up top. Rynek in a 1 3 1 zone. KO thinking about the shot. 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Rynek doing a great job of moving around, rotating on defense, and the shot clock expires after the air ball. Rynek possession. On a possession like that, they're moving the ball a lot, but you know, you got to get the shot off eventually. It looked like they had the opportunity and didn't take it. And attacking the zone is, a, is really about getting into the teeth of the defense as Caparelli takes that shot. Rebound comes down to Hutt, and I what think she can have a huge game this game. She has, they definitely have the size advantage down low. Absolutely. And I think they could dominate the boards. But it's key to attack the zone, not just pass it around looking for the three as KO hits a big three right there from Kazuna Oda. Good shot right there. That's what they needed in the other possession. They just wouldn't take the chance. If they're going to win this game, they have to take the chances that they normally wouldn't. Yep. Be aggressive, attack, get into the defense, and kick it out for the three. Have some more open shots as Petia misses the mid-range shot, comes right back to her, puts up the floater off the glass, and in. I think she needed that once you get that first one out of the way. Oh, yeah. And this is KO trying to take a big three. Rebound comes down, and the putback is missed. And it's Caparelli pushing. Kick out to Petia. She drives, shoots another floater off the glass, misses. Rebound comes right to Katie Blanche as she uses her long arms to get the putback. Great patience by Blanche, too, to stay under the rim and wait for that rebound. And she didn't even have great position there, but her size advantage helped to get that rebound as KO tries to take a mid-range shot. Mayuka Nakata 
will be at the free throw line. So being a former basketball player yourself, how do you attack a zone like what Ryan Neck is throwing at them right now? Well, the easiest way is to be making your shots. You know, making three-point baskets, that's, that busts up the zone. They'll eventually have to come out of that zone and go man-to-man, -man, which you can really take advantage of the mismatches at that point. But if, if your three ball isn't necessarily on, it's really attacking the gaps, manipulating the defense, moving the ball around, attacking and kicking out for those, for those wide open threes, or, and it opens up even more driving angles for the offense. So it's really being aggressive and attacking. Good shot right there by Caparelli. She's getting heated up early. Oh yeah. So why is it do you think that in the NBA, there's more man played than in college and high school. Because is it the skill gap, skill gap or the size of the court? It, it's, the, it's the skill level of the players. I mean, it's really hard to play zone. And also, you, you have defensive three-second violations in the NBA that, that really make it hard to stay in the paint for an extended period of time. And then the players are so skillful. So if you run in zone and just leaving these players open, hoping that they miss, you don't want to do that against these very, those very talented players. So you got to man up. And that layup is up and in. And that was Mayu Nakamura. Riding it with the 10-7 lead. Caparelli goes straight down the lane. Finger roll and in. And she's really Coach, taking over this game early on. She's in attack mode to start this game. So Coach Martinez calls a timeout for the Unicorns. Jeremy and I will be right back. We are back after the... KO timeout. If she gets it across the timeline, KO swinging it around the perimeter, looking for that seam in the defense. They decide to take a three. It's off the back arm. Rebound comes down to Katie Blanche. Caparelli pushing again. Over to Pechia. She misses that three. And the rebound comes down to Nakamura. I don't think that was the exact look they were going for, but it was open when she shot it. I think Rynek really has to understand their advantage in this game. The threes are okay to keep the defense honest, but really attacking the paint, getting those rebounds is really going to be how Rynek pulls away in this game. And it looks like they'll get most of them because KO right now is living and dying by the three. And that's a and great pass there. From the arc. But I, I agree. And KO, their best bet is to be knocking down that three ball this entire game. That's how they're going to stay in it. It's going to be hard to drive in the paint against Kiara Hutt and Katie Blanche. KO gets it to the high post. Thinking about the three. Now the three goes up and misses. Rebound comes down to Caparelli, and she's pushing. Good pass to Parker, and Parker be called for traveling. That was a great pass to set it up, but you know, you can't travel down there in the paint. But hey, they still have a five point lead. Clock's winding in the first quarter. They'll have time to fix it. KO thinks about the three. And now putting it up is Oda, and she knocks it down. 12 10 right neck lead. So it looks like KO's getting some open looks. They missed their last three threes. But a play like that, would you think about switching to man, or would you stay with this 3 2 zone they have going? If if I'm riding that, shot. I think the zone could work for now. You know, it's the beginning of the game. Players still getting warmed up a little bit. But I'd expect Rynek to switch their defense to a man-to-man, -man, maybe even full court, because KO is staying in this game right now. Maybe applying some pressure might change things. Test out their ball handling a little bit as Petri is called for traveling. And Rynek is coming to this game not completely 100% focused right now. But also giving credit to KO as they've been knocking down their shots, coming into this game playing fearless thus far. Absolutely. I think we may need to have the Caparelli takeover to end this quarter to really solidify that lead going to the second. And I think she's doing good if she can continue pushing the ball. She is. She just needs her teammates to run with her, run those lanes, and get easy layups. 
And this three ball is up by Oda. And air balls, rebound comes down to Taylor Madison. Madison Taylor, excuse me. And the pass down to the short corner to Hutt. Petria has that one knocked away. And another good defensive play from K.O. That was a great steal by Ishii right there. And K.O. gets that one back. Resets with 20 seconds left on the shot clock. One minute left on the game clock. K.O. swings it over. Three ball is up and in. And K.O. has their first lead of the game, 15-14. Ana Tanaki with that three, wow. Hey, they're getting open looks. I might want to switch to the man sooner rather than later because KO is just passing the ball until they exploit it. The right neck defenders are trying to come up and switch the zone. They have, I think they have to switch to a man. Yeah, that's a drive there. Kick out to the short corner and KO scores again. And it's Oda. What a swing to wind down this first quarter. We thought right neck was going to run away with it and KO's not backing down. Got to respect every opponent. Parker is fouled on that shot, and Coach Martinez doesn't like that one as he runs down to the end, but still shows some, some good morals, gets the ball for the referee. <laughs> so Rynek struggling a little bit here against KO to start this, this game, down by three with 22 seconds left to go in the first. And I'm sure this is not what they expected. No, not at all. We have number four, Caitlin Rodriguez, sophomore guard, checking in for Rynek. See if she could provide a spark. Morgan Parker goes one for two. And it's going to be key for Rynek to play their game, not succumbing to what KO wants them to do. And it looks like that's what's happening right now. Yeah. They are moving around. Three seconds left on the shot clock. They put it up and tries to get it off the backboard. Rebound comes down to the to Rynek. And they struggled a bit in that first quarter, especially the last minute or so. Down 17 to 15 to the KO Unicorns. And we'll be right back with the second quarter. Back here at the start of the second quarter on LMC TV where the Rynek Panthers are trailing the KO Academy Unicorns 15 to 17. Rynek has the ball, Caparelli at the top of the key. Caparelli takes a three ball and oh, just off mark, rebounded by KO. I'm interested to see what adjustments Rynek made. She did Tanaki. Yeah, as am I. I want to see if they, they figured it out in the huddle, if they're still going to struggle. And as of now, it still looks like they're struggling. Yeah, I think that was Oda there, and that was a nice Euro step. Yep. 19-15 lead for KO. Cabrera to Parker, and the ball goes out of bounds. It'll be KO possession. 7.20 left in the second quarter. KO coming in at 3-9. and nine. They are no slouch. Although they're undersized, they play very disciplined. They have shooters around the perimeter that can make shots. So the Panthers cannot continue to take them lightly. And I'm sure they're well aware of that now, being down by four. And they're showing into the patience second quarter. more than anything else, too. They're showing a lot of patience, just mm -hmm. swinging the ball around the perimeter, looking for something to open up. And that's a good pass there, getting it to the high post. You see, she tried to get it out to Ishii, but just wasn't there. Right next defense was too suffocating there. I think Rynek really needs to attack the basket and use their size advantage as best as they can. Caparelli was, oh, she wasn't fouled there. It was offensive foul. Yeah, I think that was a moving pick call there. Ishii taking the ball up court for a KO. Swimming the ball and a three ball. And it's good by number two, Ana Tanaki. K.O. takes a 22 to 15 lead. K.O. coming in, sniping this game. And that's a great pass down low. Cut unable to handle that one. Yep. Caparelli saw an opening there, just couldn't quite get the pass to her. And 
we have a timeout. Timeout by Ryan Neck, I believe. Yeah, Coach Lincoln wants to talk things over with this team as they've gotten out to a slow start. Sure, they expect to really be in control, being as you know the obvious. They have the obvious size advantage, but KO is knocking down their shots and busting up the right neck zone. If you were right neck, would be one change you'd try to make right now. Um, I think it would be all defensive. I mean, you're you're down by seven. I think you got to amp up the defensive pressure, test KO, see see if they can handle the pressure, see if they have the ball handlers to handle the pressure. And it seems like they are testing them, and KO's just passing every test as of now. I mean, they are testing them, but they're sitting back in a 2-3 zone, basically letting KO swing the ball around, waiting for something to happen. I think um, it's time for Ryanek to, to change it up a bit and amp up the pressure. Absolutely. KO will inbound. Point guard Ishii taking the ball up the floor. Oh, and she takes a shot right away and just off the mark. Rebounded by number 40, Kiara Hutt. And it's like you've been saying this entire game, just that size advantage. And offensively, that's how Ryanek can really take advantage. Hutt with the rebound, they're swinging it out. It's a foul on the floor. And Ryanek will inbound. I think these girls could really, right neck, it's, it's not about just rushing. It's really about being patient, finding a way to get into the paint, back them down a little bit, shoot a little nice hook shot, get some easy points like that. Rodriguez at the top of the key to Pechia. Pechia is looking for an opening, but there's just not much. Back to Rodriguez. Drives it, kicks it. The shot's no good by number 30, Olivia Andreoli. on the play. Peccio will inbound once more. Seven seconds left on the shot clock. She has Rodriguez open. Rodriguez with the floater, and it's good. Great move there by Rodriguez. Pump fake, one dribble, pull up. That's a simple play. Shooting it over top of the defenders. Just getting back to fundamentals. Yep. I think she was out of bounds on that one. Out of bounds on the baseline. KO turning the ball over. It looks like this could be right next opportunity right here. Rodriguez to Pechia. Swings it out back to Pechia for three. And it's no good off the mark. Rebounded by KO. Rodriguez applying some pressure on this side of the floor. Get it back to Ishii. She kicks it right back out. And it looks like they're looking for that three ball and there it is. It's off the mark, so the ball go back to Ryan Eck. It looks like, looks like KO has a strict plan in mind, and they're just sticking to it. And I think Ryan Eck isn't ready for that because they're not changing anything. They're just sticking to the same plan. And, and maybe Ryan Eck is trying to stick with their plan as well. You know, it's the Petia beginning. for three. Early stages the of the mark. game. I think the difference in the game right now is Katie Blanche defense. will check in for Kiara Hutt. Yeah, absolutely. Defense has been the most important aspect of this game right now. But not that they're not playing defense. Is is the defense not leading to offense? Three off the mark. Another air ball. Pecciel will take it up the floor. There's no transition buckets for Ryanek. KO is slowing the game down like they want to, setting up their 2-3 zone. And I think Ryanek needs to change that. I think the addition of Katie Blanche right now could help shift the momentum. It's a foul by Peccia. Tanaki will inbound to Ishii. 4 1 left in the first half. Rynek trails KO 17 22. Basketball is all about mismatches. KO, they may have the speed advantage and they're a little more disciplined offensively. But Rynek, they have the main advantage in basketball, which is size. 
So the game is played inside out. Almost a great pass set up by Ishii. I believe there's a foul on Rynek. Ishii will inbound. And it looks like Rynek is getting to that aggressive defense you were talking about too. Mm -hmm. Ishii will inbound. Ishii from the corner, and it's good. 25-17 KO, they're just pouring it on right now. Ishii with a three. They got some snipers, definitely. Yep. Pecci is looking for Rodriguez in that corner. She'll find her. Rodriguez for three. And it's off the mark. Tanaki inbounds to Ishii. Ishii's really taking her time, too. You can tell she's looking at the clock. She knows what exactly they have to do and how to manage the time right now. Yep. KO is playing it possession by possession. Tanaki wide open at the top of the key. She'll take a three, and it's off the mark. Pecci with the rebound. Pushing the ball up court. Finds Rodriguez. Looks like they're going to slow it down here a little bit. Pecci it back to Rodriguez. Great pass there. A good pass, just a little off the mark. Fighting for the ball. And possession, uh, and it's a travel by Madison Taylor, right neck. Yeah, she rolled around on the floor. Call for traveling there. And Tanaki Kayo. will check out. Got to give credit to KO throughout this first half. They've been playing very disciplined, very under control. Rotating very well on defense. Yushi kicks it out, and it's off the mark from three. Lance with the rebound. Rodriguez calling for the ball. She looks to push it up the court. It looked like she was going to pull up there. Out to Pechia. Right next, really moving the ball right now, but it looks like they can't find what they're looking for to open. Contested shots, fouled. That'll be two shots for right now. KO really packing in the paint, closing up any passing or driving lanes, trying to force Rynek to shoot long threes or long twos, which are even better. And that one's good from Taylor. One of one. Two for two. One fifty and counting left. Rynek trails nineteen to twenty-five. I thought a travel might be called there, but I guess not. And the ball is turned over. Rodriguez taking it up court. Slows the game down a bit. One thirty and counting left. Okay, they're doing a Rodriguez, great job again. Pechia, down to Blanche. Gets it out to Taylor. And the ball is turned over. Ishii driving the ball up court. Good pass. Oh, and it just slips. KO stay with the ball. And timeout taken by KO Academy. Yeah, I think that's a great timeout by Coach Martinez there. Sees his team a little out of control. Critical part in the game, being up by six with just over a minute left to go in the first half. This is where KO either keeps their lead, expands it, expands it, or loses yeah. it. So. Well, this could be the dagger, too. If they hit a three right here, go up mm -hmm. by nine points, say they get a turnover on Rynek's next possession, you can really pull away here. They can walk into the walk into halftime with, you know, 10, 11 point lead. Yeah. And that's a key psychological factor. You know, you, you see a team down by seven versus being down by 11. Makes, it increases the sense of urgency, but once that sense of urgency is higher, it may, it, some people, you know, some players, they're not ready. They play out of control at that point. Yep. You know what I mean? You're Absolutely. trying to come back so quick. There's no 20-point shot. So, Tanaki will inbound. Ishii with the ball. She's definitely had the most possession on, on KO so far. Mm -hmm. Really managing that game from the top. And that's three Oda. taken. Oh, and it's off the mark by Oda. Huge possession here for Rynek. Pechia driving the ball up the court. Gets it to Rodriguez, to Taylor. 
off the mark. And what a rebound by Blanche, but she misses the putback. Oda gets the ball to Ishii. 45 seconds and counting left. Ryan Neck trailing by six. Ishii thought about the shot for a second, but didn't take it. Extreme patience, 10 seconds left on the shot clock. A low percentage shot taken right there. Shot clock is off. We have 20 seconds in running left in the half. Rodriguez gets it to Pescia. Moves it across court, up to Rodriguez. Kicks it back out, and the three is off the mark. Six seconds left, Ishii driving the ball up the court. She's looking for a shot opportunity. Takes the shot, and it's an air ball, and we go into halftime with Rhineck Panthers trailing the KO Academy Unicorns 19 to 25 here on LMC TV. We're back with the second half action, Rhineck, where Rhineck trails KO Academy 19 to 25. Yeah, Rhineck's still in that zone defense. So we'll see how they decide to play it this half, looking like they're out a little bit more to stop those three balls from KO. And it's working early on. Steal by Captain Morgan Parker. Caparelli driving the ball up the court. Gets it to Peccia. And good shot. Good shot by Katie Blanche. And you see the difference already. Patience there from Peccia, waiting for Blanche Absolutely. to come to the high post. Blanche looking for the, for the high-low pass. It's not there. She shoots the short free throw line jumper. And, and the Panthers steal get another right there steal. by Kiara Hutt. Caparelli driving it up. Looks like she'll take it by herself. Good shot by Caparelli. Give her two points. And now right neck trailing by two. To start the second half, they're trailing by six. Got a turnover, made a bucket. And here they are, trailing by two points. Yeah, you see the difference in energy, the difference in focus level. Tanaki inbounds to Ishii. Ishii barking out orders. Dishes to Tanaki. And another steal. Caparelli driving it up to Peccia. Does it by herself. And the shot's no good. Rebound by KO. And I like how Rynek decided to stay with the zone, but they're expanding it out beyond the three-point line, depending on Blanche and Hutt to get those rebounds down low. And really taking away the three ball. What a block by Hutt. Foul called on the shot. Yeah, the fans don't like that one. They don't like that call at all. <laughs> and one thing I noticed they're doing that you mentioned earlier, they weren't playing the high post before, mm -hmm. and now uh, Kiara Hutt's sitting in the high post. Yeah. So they took that away from them. And I think That's it makes a difference. I think it makes it easier for that the now the the top of the zone, the guards, they're Shot out further now. Nakata. They're out way further now, and that's making Kiara Hutt. This giving her space to scoot up and actually guard the high post instead of just sitting back in the paint behind the high post. And two for two by Nakata. Kayla stretches their lead to four points, 6.30 and counting. Caparelli to Peccia, back to Caparelli. Peccia drives and the floater is no good. Can't get her own rebound and Ishii gets the loose ball. Ishii tried to finesse a pass in there to Nakamura. Tried to finesse it, didn't he? <laughs> Knocked out by Pechia. Oh. Yeah, I think oh, Pechia so or Parker hit it, and then it hit a KO play. Oh, okay. Right, so Pechia with the inbound to Caparelli, having a laugh with the ref. And, and you see Rydneck's intentions, trying to get it straight to that high post. Hut with a rebound, but dribble knocks off of her foot. Coach Sean Lincoln giving her advice as she runs up court. Ryanek really manning up outside on that perimeter, still playing zone, but guarding, guarding closely to whoever's in their area. And a block by Katie Blanche. To Hutt. And Parker misses the shot. 
Parker had the opportunity there to get to get two points for Inek, couldn't capitalize. The Inek ball inbound by Pechia. Ishi ties her shoes. And when the Panthers get the ball, they need to keep it high because those pesky defenders on KO are going to steal it every time they put it down low on the floor. Caparelli from the corner gets it to Hutt. And Hutt misses the turnaround. It took a couple bounces. I thought it was going to go their way, but it's not. Ishii pushes it up to Oda. And Oda's fouled by Kiara Hutt. Oda will go to the line, take two shots. So Ryanek came out with some good energy. KO back at the free throw line, trying to get their lead back up to six. As they want to withstand this early storm that the Panthers are bound to, bound to bring after halftime. Maura Gabriel checks in for Ryanek. Checking out is Katie Blanche. The first shot is no good from Oda. Second shot on the way. 5.19 left in this third quarter. Ball is up and it's good. Make it a five point lead for KO. It looked like KO was gonna roll over at the start of this half and here they come again. No. Just like when the game started. Yeah, Thought they, they were gonna roll over and they don't. They're definitely not gonna roll over, but Rynek's definitely not gonna oh, roll over as well. What a pass to Hutt. Oh, it's off the mark. Ishii moving the ball up court. She has some momentum, and it's off the mark. Caparelli with the rebound. Caparelli up to Peccia. Peccia across court to Parker, and Parker for three. It's off the mark. Rebound is no good. Ishii recovers the ball. She has some speed and then slows it down. Top of the key to Tanaki, back to Ishii. Oda at the top of the key now. Back to Tanaki. She's looking for something to open. It looked like they had something for a second. Four on the shot clock. And Tanaki's three off the mark. Caparelli looks like she might take it herself. Oh, gets the deflection. Good pass. Back down to Caparelli, and that's two points for Ryanek. They good needed pass. those points more than anything for some momentum. Yeah, good pass and recognition there from Kiara Hutt. Foul on Ryanek will stay KO's ball. Last three and a half minutes of this third quarter. Yuna Nakamara crucial. checks in for Kale. An Ishii shot is blocked by Caparelli. She anticipated that. Ten left on the shot clock. Caparelli almost with another, but it's deflected, stolen by Hutt. Hutt to Peccia. Peccia's shot is no good, but she's fouled on the shot. That'll be two shots for Ryanek. Peccia, usually one of the main scorers for Ryanek, struggling a little bit tonight, but she could get hot at any time and change, and change a game. First shot is no good. Second shot is off. Almost a rebound there for Ryanek. Couldn't hold on to it. Ishii at the top of the key. Dishes it to Oda. Oda looks to make a move inside, but dishes it back out. KO with some momentum. Got a little sloppy there for a bit, but they recovered. And a moving pick called on KO Academy. 
Uh, Nakamura is called on that moving pick. What did you think of that call? Um, it could have been called. It could have not been called. It is what it is. Mayu Nakamura checks back in for KO. Caporelli moving the ball up the court. Dishes to Peccia. Back to Caporelli. Back to Peccia. And Hutt has the ball at the high post. The Out pass. To Parker. They're really moving the ball right now. Peccia for three, and it's good. And we have a tie ball game. Ryan Neck comes all the way back, tied at 28. 230 left in the third quarter. And this gym's getting loud. Ryan doing a good job, staying disciplined throughout this third quarter, finally breaking it back even. Great defense by Caparelli this quarter. Kale right. gets the ball back. I really agree with that. She's at the top of the zone, wreaking havoc out top, having her arms up the whole time, really limiting the shot attempts for Kale in this, in this quarter. And Ichi with a quick three, and it's off. And it'll be right neck ball after some uh, some juggling right there between the two. Caparelli will walk it up the court. Two minutes left, game tied at 28 in the third quarter. Oh, and Petya for three, he's going for it again, and it's good. And right neck takes a three point lead with a minute 53 left in the third quarter behind back to back threes. Carissa Petio, she can get hot at any time. Change the whole complexion of the game. It's almost as if right when you said that, it happened. Oh, you yeah. spoke it into fruition. Oh, that's usually how it goes, Jeremy. <laughs> usually. <laughs> but I'm I'm proud to see Ryanek coming out this second half with much more focus, um, expanding their, their zone defense out onto the perimeter, li limiting the shots from KO and it's really been a huge difference here in this third quarter. I think the KO is going to try to come out of this timeout and amp up the pressure. They have no choice at this point. They got to speed up the game a little bit because Ryanek has really figured out how they can break up that zone. You know, they, they're playing inside out now. They're getting into the high post, kicking it out, as you just saw in that last three from Petia. And... K.O.'s going to have to make some slight adjustments. Ryan Neck taking away K.O.'s easiest pass, even though they didn't have any buckets from there, but taking away their easiest pass mm -hmm. has taken away a lot of their points as well. K.O. seems to be struggling for answers right now. Tanaki with the inbound to Ichi. K.O. seems to be taking this possession slower. You see the top, Chitanaki for three, and air ball. Rebounded by Mora Gabriel. Caparelli taking the ball up the court now. Finds Parker on the outside. Caparelli would do it herself. Nice Rebound. move there. Rebound by Ko. Shot off the mark for Caparelli. Somehow Ko retains possession on that. Oda drives it, and great pass. Good dish. And if Ko wants to win this game, they're gonna have to make shots like that, easy opportunities like that. Minute mm -hmm. under a minute left in the third quarter now. Ryanek with a three-point lead. Good hands from Ko. And good hustle and from Parker. And a turnover recovered by Tanaki. Oh, what a pass by, what a pass by Ishii to Nakamura. KO slims the lead down to one. That was a pistol peak pass right there. It really was. Down to 30 left in the 30. Caparelli with the ball. And she gets called for a travel. Looks like KO's getting some momentum now. These last, this last 30 to, 30 seconds to a minute from KO has been phenomenal. They withstood the run by, by Ryanek, and they're down by just one point, trying to get the last shot to go into the fourth quarter. Shot clock is off. Let's see if Ishii can pull something together for her team. She's been the vocal and physical leader of this team tonight. Right, 
Ooh, Oda, that was a shot right there. Oh, and a turnover. Bad pass by Ishii. Ryan Eck will have the ball with 2.4 remaining in the third quarter. Let's see if they can get a miracle. Oh, Did you inbounds, Tanaki. Tanaki could have caught that ball, maybe taking a shot. Yeah, I don't think she thought she could get it there from that distance. Yeah. You got to try, don't you? Yeah, always. <laughs> yeah. Well, but. at the end of three, Ryan Neck takes a 31-30 lead into the fourth quarter. They lead KO Academy. We are back here for fourth quarter action. The Panthers up by one, outscoring KO by seven in that third quarter. And it was a very important third quarter for the Panthers coming out with some defensive pressure and really taking control of this game. Taking back control of this game, I should say. As and we thought they'd have this control earlier, but KO just never went away. Yeah, they went on a big run in the second quarter. Took a nice lead going into halftime, but the Panthers made some nice defensive adjustments. That was a good look for Caparelli right there. I think so far the biggest takeaway of this game, the most important word you have to use, is execution. Mm -hmm. Yep, I agree with that. And KO's done a good job of executing, finding the right passing angles, being patient and disciplined on offense. As a deep three is up and in, and that is Akari Ishii as she takes the lead back for the unicorn. Ishii from way downtown. That might have been an NBA three yeah, right that there. Was, yeah, that was real deep. You see what I mean? Execution. She had an open shot. She took it and executed. Yeah. And Petya tries to answer right back. She misses, and the rebound comes down to the unicorns. Pushing this Ishii. She gets it across the timeline, gets a screen. She could have took another deep one there. But she decides Surprised to reset. She didn't. Heat check. Right, why not? Ishii's been the heart and soul of this team today. Yeah, she's done a great job of controlling the tempo. Turns it over there as Oda wasn't looking. And Caparelli's pushing it down the throw to the defense. Goes in for the and one. And she'll try to take the lead back for the Panthers. And the way I said Ishii was the heart and soul of the Unicorns today, Caparelli's Caparelli been was. the heart and soul of the Panthers today. Most definitely. Off the front of the rim. And it's a tie-up between Blanche and Nakata. And possession arrow goes to the Unicorns. KO moving the ball around near travel there. Not called. Moving it around, trying to get it to that high post. They get it there. Oda up top. Five seconds left on the shot clock. The Unicorns have to get a shot up. It's Oda. Well, it's not Oda. Actually, Ishii. She airballs that deep one. And tied up at 33. Ryan Neck will try to get their lead. Caparelli bringing it across the timeline. Up top to Petia. Good pass down low, but knocked away by Nakamura. I don't know if it's film study or just great practicing, but it seems like KO's is always one step ahead of Ryan Neck. Ryan yeah. Neck really has to work for their points. Yeah, KO's undersized. They're packing in the paint to you know, be prepared for those rebounds and stop the driving lanes as Blanche uses her size there to get that layup up and in. And I'm surprised they haven't gone for more easy points like that since the start of this game. Yeah. They've been right there. They could, they could have definitely taken advantage of that every play. And one of the main rules in higher level basketball is whatever works, keep doing it. Keep doing it. Back, right back, right back, right back. And these girls, they're, they're still young, a very young team. They'll learn. Rebound comes down there. It's a great she fight for the Taylor. ball by Taylor. She's just, a, she's just an eighth grader. Yeah, you want to see aggression like that of such a young player. Yeah. Caparelli up top. 
over to Rodriguez. Pachia is open for a little bit, down low. Back up top to Pachia, she puts it up and in. There's another three, wow. And Ryanek trying to take control here, now up by five. Up by five with five minutes left to go in the game. Pachia is feeling it from beyond the perimeter. Oda puts it up, too strong. Rebound comes to Petria and she's pushing. Still pushing. KO trying to set up their defense. Smart by Petria to slow it down there. Caparelli sees the lane. She goes up with and the finger roll and another and one for Sophia Caparelli. Sophomore guard for the Panthers. Ryan now expanding their lead to seven. Trying to go up by eight. Do you think KO has it in them to make this comeback, or do you think Ryneck's just feeling the groove now? Um, I think Ryneck is going to come away with this victory. They really settled in. It took them a while, but they're really settled in now. Now they have a three-on-two advantage, and good defense there by KO. And that could be the turnover KO needed if Ishii can make a play right now. The Giving it right back. By Caparelli. How many times have we heard that tonight? Yeah, so Caparelli gets another steal. And the Panthers are going to try to get another bucket here and expand their lead. And now the Panthers can really play. They can really, you know, take some more three balls as Petria is fouled there. But now they don't have to be as precise with how they're playing the game. They could take some more risk now being up by eight. Would you try to play more keep-away ball right now if you were them? Oh, no. Or would, I would you just now just play your game without any worries? Just play your game. Just keep attacking. Keep attacking. That's the mark from Petio. Got to keep attacking. Oh for 2 from the line. Here comes Ishii. She tries to hit another pistol peep pass. This one's deflected over to Petia. She walks it up across the timeline. Yishi must have greased her shoulder before this game because she's trying to sling the rock out yeah, here. Oh, yeah. Caparelli hands it off to Petia. Patience by Ryanek as they look for a crease. Over to the short corner to Petia. She powers her way to the hoop and what finishes the layup. What a look by her to see her across the court. Great vision. Behind the basket, too. Short corner. Great pass there. And Ryanek has their first double-digit lead of the game. Up 43 to 33. Three minutes left to go. And this is a deep three. And this one is off the mark by Ishii. Ryanek really settling in now. Took them a while. They, they started to get it going during the third quarter. Kept the momentum going throughout the fourth quarter. Now up by 10. Trying to get out of here with this home victory. You know, what's, you know what's amazing that they've done this quarter is that everyone on the court is in 10th grade or below. Wow. I didn't, I didn't notice that, but that is zero upperclassmen on the court right now. Wow. And they've pretty much kept the same lineup for most of the quarter, if not the entire quarter. Katie Blanche misses that short hook shot there. But, yeah, that's huge because that just shows their youth and how much potential they have moving forward. Exactly. I'm sure Coach Sean Lincoln is very, very pleased with what he's seeing right now from his young team. Mm -hmm. Blanche knocks down the first. And if Katie Blanche, she's just a freshman, if she could really get her game under control, learn a couple simple moves, she could be a force down low. So Blanche gets three points on that trip. Panthers now by 13. If she develops a jumper with her height, that's going to be lethal when she becomes an upperclassman. And KO kind of falling apart now as they call for a moving screen. 13 point lead, 223 left. I don't know if KO has it in them. 
they definitely got the heart. I just think it's just the the difference in size and skill at this point. And they're going to need Ryan Neck to shoot themselves in the foot, and it starts right there with the turnover. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're moving good pass there, and the layup is finished by Mayuka Nakata. And Coach Martinez wants to call a timeout to make one final run down by 11 for his team. Two minutes left to go. We'll be right back. After the timeout from Coach Martinez, it is Rydneck inbounding. And KO is now in full court man-to-man -man pressure, trying to make a, a run to get back in this game. And that's a near turnover. A little volleyball there by Caporelli to keep the play alive. They're trying to get it over the timeline. They do. Good oh, screen there from Rodriguez. The three ball is up by Pechia off the rim. Rebound to Parker, and she puts it up and in. It's a great hustle by Parker right there to stay with it. Stay with the play. Oda pump fakes on that one. Ishii drives in, tries to dish it. And KO misses the layup there. Gets it back and puts it up and in is Mayuka Nakata. Still in man-to-man -man pressure. Caparelli gets it. Another good screen from Rodriguez. And Caparelli will bring it out. Rodriguez over to Pechia. Pechia could have probably backed her down there, took her time. Gets it back, though. Ishii's not giving up. She's playing aggressive defense all until the end. A minute left, fabulous, down by 11. A fabulous timeout call there from Coach Lincoln. Seeing his team a little bit out of whack. Trying to keep this 11-point lead with a minute left to go. And Ryneck, they've done a good job here in the fourth quarter of really pulling away. Well, another thing for this timeout is I think he called that timeout mainly because, you know, you have this 11-point lead, there's a minute left. You pretty much know you're going to win, but I think at this point it's more of a pride thing. It's, hey, guys, instead of winning by six, letting them crawl back a little bit, let's keep the momentum, kind of, you know, stomp on their throat mentality. Let's win by 15 or 16, mm -hmm. something like that. So I think that was the main reason for this timeout is just to have a commanding win, not just win. That's, that's definitely a possibility. Coach Lincoln <laughs> having this ferocious mindset of just stomping on the jugular of the opponents. But uh, I think he just called that timeout to just maintain possession for his team and get a good shot off. That could be it as well. <laughs> But you have a turnover there from Blanche. And this game is not over yet. It's KO. They've been raining threes all night. We'll see if they can get a couple more try to, to try to stay in this one. Issue with the pass. And this one is off the mark. And fouled is Oda. She gets the offensive rebound. And she'll be at the line shooting two with 45 seconds left to go. It'll be Kiara Hutt checking into the game for Katie Blanche. And Blanche did a great job with her time on the court, especially here in the fourth quarter. Good overall game for her today. If she could really polish her game as much as she can, she could be a very dangerous basketball player. A lot of dribbles there from Oda. Must be well worth it. She work. goes two for two, cutting the Ryneck lead to nine. And the final timeout called by Coach Martinez. Do you like this timeout by Coach Martinez right now? Yeah, why not? You can't take them with you. So why not call the timeout, set up your defense, try to get a steal, maybe another three. Now you're down by six with 30-something seconds left to go and you still you still have a chance to win. So that's a good time out there from Coach Martinez. Nine point game with 45 seconds left is not completely out of the question. Do you think KO can still make a run for it or? Um, they, there's still life. They definitely still have life. But I think Ryanek, they're in a groove right now. They're playing some some pretty smart basketball here in this fourth quarter to where, you know, KO's defense can't really affect them as much as it did in the first quarter. 
You know what I'm saying? So I think Rynek's still going to come away with the victory, but the door is still open for KO. Rynek just has to shut it at this point. Yep. Knock down their free throws, move the ball around, not turn it over, and they'll come away with the victory. I think that Rynek, they, they learned a lot this game. And they learn to not underestimate any opponent. They learn how to understand mismatches and advantages and disadvantages in a basketball game. So I think moving forward, especially for the younger players that they have, it's going to really help them elevate and knowing how to win. And it showed them how to face adversity. You know, yep. They were down in this game. They could have just rolled over and let Kaya win this. But they stormed back, and they stormed back big, you know, in a big way. Um, and, you know, this game, should they win, you know, will get them back to 500, back in the playoff hunt. So I think this was just a really great game, like you said, especially for the younger players to learn how to face adversity. Right. Um, you know, play just through, like, you know, the difficult aspects of this game. Mm -hmm. And you still got to give credit to KO, too. They came out, they fought, they, they knew their advantages and their disadvantages. And they fought for as long as they could. And they're still fighting right now. And what a game by Akari Ishii. She has not given up. So it'll be Hut at the line, shooting two. Here, Hutt goes one for two, 39 seconds left to go, and KO's running out of time. If she with it, she thinks about the shot. She shoots it and misses. And possession will go to the Panthers. So Coach Lincoln wants to call one of his final timeouts, 25.4 left to go. Rynek 49, KO 39. We'll be right back. Back after the Coach Lincoln timeout. Rynek advanced the ball. It's Pechia getting it in to Caparelli. She's looking for a pass, but has it stolen by Ishii. And Ishii passes it up to Oda. Oda driving in, going up for the layup and scores. Slips, slips between two defenders right there. And that was a nice finish there by Oda. 13.3 left to go. I think it's just too little too late at this point. But I commend KO for their fight throughout this entire game. They have nothing to really hang their heads about. Some A few slight adjustments they can make in order to maybe have still been up in this game. But they fought as hard as they could. But, but Rynek, they just you know, got things under control and started to execute. Like you said, the main word of this game is execution. And Rynek, you know, midway through that third quarter and well into the fourth quarter, they've been executing. Back to what you said about KO, even when you saw them go down by double digits, you never saw them lose an ounce of fight. They were still playing the same way, still trying yep. to score the same way, playing defense just as aggressively. Um, yep. Like you said, just hats off to them, just great game played by them, nothing to hang their heads about. Yeah, it's just tough when you live and die by the three-pointer. And KO, they really have to, to a certain extent. They don't really have any real post players. So when you live and die by the three, it can be tough, you know. Rynek, they just stayed consistent as much as they could. And then, like, like we said, third and fourth quarter, they amped it up a bit, expanded their zone defense to limit some of those three-point shots from KO and took control of this game. And on both sides, most of this is being done by, you know, freshmen, sophomores, and juniors. There's only a combined five seniors in this mm -hmm. entire game, like from both teams, only a combined five seniors. Wow. So both teams have a lot to look forward to. Yeah. A lot of youth. So this should be a good battle for years to come. You should see this game, KO trying to develop their players, really teach them the game of basketball, them being predominantly Japanese. Basketball isn't really their first sport. 
Although one of my favorite players right now, Rui Hachimura, who plays for the Wizards, he's Japanese, and you know, things are things are moving up for everyone. Yeah. Well, basketball is a global sport; it touches everyone. Yep. Especially at this point in time with the recent loss of Kobe and Gigi Bryant. It's a ter terrible tragedy, not only for the sport, but you know, just for the world. Yeah. Um, one of a kind, one of a kind human who's just who's obsessed with his family too you know yeah. his daughter was going to do big things yeah. you know people once you, your family is known on a national scale like that you know that's when it just really hits everybody and it's just yeah. just tough for the sport just uh, tough to swallow yeah condolences to everybody involved all the families not just the Bryant family but all the families involved just a terrible tragedy yeah. the world stopped on that day yeah and i think you know definitely a tragedy but I think it's going to really elevate the minds of a lot of athletes around the world as well you know especially the women athletes you know Kobe was a pillar in improving and expanding the women's game it's and just amazing he was on his way to a women's game that day yeah. Yeah. moving forward we'll see how things pan out and the rest of this season, Ryanette coming away with the victory here, 50 to 41 over the KO Unicorns. And Jeremy and I will be right back with post-game analysis and interviews. Elijah Ware here with Sophia Caparelli while your teammates hype you up real good. Um, Y'all struggled a bit there in the first half. What changed um, in the third quarter and the fourth quarter? Well, we knew that KO's score is like record wasn't as good so we didn't want to come in this game thinking that we were going to win right away and then knowing we came in the second half we were losing so we just had to push ourselves to get the win what was your mindset you were getting into the paint a lot in the second half what, what changed in your mindset to really be in attack mode well i know i really need to push myself because um i haven't been doing too well lately and i know that getting in the paint is going to get me good fouls so i can get to the line and get some points so you you all are seven and seven now. Mm -hmm. um, the playoffs are approaching slowly but surely. Uh, how do you feel about your team moving forward? Well, um, we do have a couple more league games coming up, so we know that we have to push and practice like we do every time. And yeah. <laughs> and one more final question. Yeah. Uh, what did y'all learn from this game? What's the main thing that y'all learned? We know we have to slow it down. We were really rushing it at one point. You know we have to, you know, try and you know stay, keep up positive energy, and lift each other up when we're doing bad. Jeremy Preferi here with Coach Sean Lincoln of the Ryan Neck Girls Basketball Team. Coach, that was a good win for you guys. Um, so you guys struggled, uh, struggled uh, early on. You know, going to the second half, you're down six points. What what did you change or what adjustments did you make in the locker room? Um, I told them to work harder. I mean, I, I I can't tell you that there was anything you know crazy in terms of. Bill Belichick style coaching that went on at halftime. It literally was, we need to put more effort into this game. That KO team showed up today to play. Um, and even though they are in some ways overmatched uh, in terms of you know their post presence and they don't have a lot of size, um, those kids play hard from the second that ball is tossed. And it showed in that first half because we really didn't show up the, and play as hard as we needed to to be in that game. Um, so that, that was it. They put their minds to it and came out in the second half and a lot more energy. And I'm, I'm proud of them for that, but we need to show up from the start. Is there anybody that you relied on going into this game or at halftime you knew you would have to heavily rely on somebody or you just wanted your team to play as a whole? Well, I wanted my team to play as a whole, but we've been focusing a lot on working more inside out and getting the ball into the post. And I thought in that second half, we did a much better job of working with Kira Hutt, Katie Blanche, Maura Gabriel, Madison Taylor. Like the, we, we got the ball inside. And I think that was a huge thing for us because then when the ball goes inside and a defense has to respect our size and collapse down, now the kickouts are available for our shooters. And our shooters need to understand that. They're going to get the ball back when teams concentrate so much on the post players. And I think that was a big adjustment for the second half. We did a much better job with it. 
So, Coach, you know, you have a couple leagues game coming up. You're moving towards the end of the season. You're now 500. What's the message to your team going towards the postseason now? Uh, it's just keep getting better. We can't stop improving. We have to keep working every day. Every other team that we're competing against for playoff seating is doing the exact same thing. Um, you know, we go right back. We can celebrate this win. It's, it's nice that we got one. Um, we get to 500 for the first time this season. But tomorrow's a new day. We get back on the practice court. We have a very tough matchup with North Salem on Saturday. Uh, and then we get get to play KO again on Monday at their place, these are not going to be easy games coming up. So we just have to concentrate on improving every single day. Elijah Way here with Jeremy Buffery. And Jeremy, Ryanette comes away with the 50-41 victory, overcoming that first half deficit. What do you think the difference was in their comeback win? Well, the difference was exactly what Coach Sean Lincoln told me, and that's he told them to play harder, and they did play harder. Early on, it looked like they, they just didn't have that same energy and passion. And then later on in the game, once they started getting hot, and once they started making threes and making the easy buckets, that's when they started playing their game and playing more fluently, um, which led them ultimately, ultimately to this victory. Yeah, I agree. Once they started to get the ball to the high post, playing, like Coach Lincoln said, inside out, they started getting more wide open shots and easy lanes to the bucket. So a good victory from the Rodney Panthers. They'll, they'll be playing this team again on Monday. So it'll be a big rematch, and KO's going to want some revenge here. I'm Elijah Ware, here with Jeremy Buffery, and we're LMC Varsity Sports.